Professor of Archaeology Hopper, accompanied by his dog, is searching for a group of hippies who vanished in the 1970s in a rural part of Texas. He discovers a van that was left there decades before along with a diary that has drawings and notes about local folklore, along with a picture of the van's owners. He notices a large hole in the ground nearby that his dog won't go near. Hopper ventures inside the cave located atop the hill to investigate, but his dog won't stop barking at it. Hopper's curiosity is piqued when he uses his flashlight to glimpse an armed cowboy inside the cave who remains still. He comes back to town right away and tells his students Jackie and Taylor that they will not be accompanying him as originally scheduled, along with requesting that they prepare climbing equipment for him. Hopper goes to the same spot a short while later, and this time, he throws a rope down the hole after tying it to a rock, just in case. After that, he returns to the cave, which his dog won't go inside. Once inside, Hopper cautiously makes his way over to the cowboy he noticed standing in the exact same location the last time. He touches it and feels what appears to be an undetectable shimmer in the air. Therefore, he assumes it to be a transparent wall and continues across it. After a span of two days, Taylor advises Jackie to search for their professor, who has not been seen since his departure. Because hiking is risky, Jackie won't go, but she will go if Taylor can get them a car. Taylor is forced to phone Kara, a classmate who is crushing on him. Along with her younger sister Veeves and closest friend Furby, who has a thing for Jackie, Kara also brings her father's jeep. The children have brought cameras for everyone, and they want to capture everything for a class project and their social media. Taylor tells them that Hopper has been fixated with locating a gang of hippies who vanished in the 1970s while searching for the Fountain of Youth, which is purportedly concealed in the region, as they make their way to the cave. When the party opens the van upon their arrival and looks through the images, they learn that Hopper's parents were the missing hippies, which helps to explain his obsession. Furby trips over a frayed rope attached to the prohibition after they take a group photo, so they decide to follow it till they come to another cave opening. Jackie descends through a little tunnel, ignoring the spiders as they get closer and closer, and finds that the rope has been severed. After giving it a closer inspection, Taylor determines that it is too ancient to be Hopper's rope. Using her flashlight, Jackie scans the tunnel and observes that Hopper's location is far within the cave. As a result, they will require the appropriate tools to search for Hopper safely. Furby is remaining because he's scared of the dark and spooky crawlers, so the party loads up the jeep with all the exploration gear and leaves him with a radio so he can keep an eye on things. With extreme caution, the gang descends the cave's tube and encounters the enigmatic shimmer. They touch it and see the shift in the air. After then, a flashback shows what transpired to Hopper after he passed through the barrier. The cowboy started to move as he ventured further inside, and an odd light flickered. Hopper fled right away after hearing some eerie noises and a scream. Upon exiting the cave, he was taken aback to discover that night had fallen despite his brief stay inside. When he got to his truck, he saw that his ID was worn out, his dog was nowhere to be found, and the vehicle was covered in thick vegetation. Hopper made the decision to check the area, which was also overgrown with vegetation, and discovered a jeep bearing a bag that said it belonged to his kids. The cave seems to have sent him into the future. Hopper returned to the cave, leaving a trail of lights behind him, worried about his kids. Hopper continued on since one of those lights appeared to be floating under the impact of the transparent barrier. Rewinding to the present, the party is still exploring the cave when they hear the same eerie sounds that Hopper had heard earlier in a different, dark passage. Ignoring Taylor's concern about Hopper, the girls decide to leave since they are afraid of something hazardous dwelling here. Jackie starts first, but as she gets closer to the top, the rope is abruptly severed, sending her plummeting. Jackie sprains her leg and Taylor hurts his arm trying to catch her. Taylor then tries to check the other rope but it has already been severed. Even though Vive claims Furby isn't the kind to do this, some of them believe it was a practical joke. However, when they attempt to reach Furby over the radio, he doesn't respond. Just as the group is debating what to do next, there is a huge thump coming from the tunnel. When Taylor tries to use the radio once more, a rough voice pleads, help me, and identifies himself as Furby. The disagreement that follows, which only ends when they hear another noise coming from the tunnel, is 
caused by the group's uncertainty about whether or not to believe him because the voice doesn't sound right. Jackie decides to stay behind due to her leg, while Taylor, Veeves, and Kara decide to search for Furby in the tunnel. She tries using her phone to follow along with what they're filming, but the signal eventually dies. The gang notices the light flickers after going for a bit till they come to a point where they can see the sky. As Kara ascends a rock, she discovers a broken rope and, upon peering behind it, something that brings tears to her eyes. As Jackie crawls in and they use a camera to see what's happening, she begs Taylor to take Veeves into the other room. To their horror, they discover Furby's lifeless body there. Taylor notes that there is additional rope on the ground and that Furby has a broken neck, indicating that someone cut his rope when he attempted to climb down. Additionally, he finds that Furby's camera is still functional, so they decide to see the entire footage to find out what transpired. To their surprise, days began to pass while the child waited for them outside. In the video, Furby bemoaned about losing communication with the group because no one responded to his yells or the radio. He read the notebook from the van when he was bored because his phone's battery had run out. According to legend, the queen dispatched a group of conquistadores to locate a mystical spring that had the ability to heal or even revive individuals. When Hopper's sister was diagnosed with cancer, Hopper's parents set out to find it. Days went by outside until Furby wanted to go since he was running low on food and water. Even though he believed his pals were gone, he still had to locate them in order to obtain the jeep keys. Furby started to descend the hole, and as he passed through the invisible barrier, he saw that the sky was changing incredibly quickly. The thump the party heard earlier was explained when Furby's rope suddenly snapped, causing him to fall to his death. Disturbed and shocked, the group pauses the video and talks about what they witnessed. They've only been here for an hour, yet it feels like days have passed. Something is wrong, and they should leave right away, especially because Taylor believes the flickering light is the sun rapidly changing from day to night. Kara will be the one to climb out and use an SOS beacon to get aid because she is the only adult who is unharmed. Kara can feel the air shifting as she ascends, and when she finally emerges, she is taken aback by the scene before her eyes. The entire area has transformed into an eerie wasteland. To further the situation, Kara is coughing uncontrollably due to the strange air and the missing rope. Kara tries to utilize the beacon as a massive sandstorm approach in the distance, but there is no signal. Kara makes the decision to descend again at that precise moment after noticing an odd triangle item hovering in the sky. She tells the group what she saw when she returns, but they don't believe her because, in their eyes, she was only gone for a short while. Kara offers them her camera so they can see all she witnessed, despite her insistence that she was out longer. To prove that their time together had only lasted a few seconds, Taylor shows her a video of himself. After several weeks of being imprisoned inside, the group eventually lets go of its denial and acknowledges that time moves more quickly outside the cave. Taylor's theory, that the flickering light represents the sun rapidly passing through the day, is correct. The ropes haven't been severed, instead, they wore off with time and friction. They are trapped here eternally as children, which is why this is called the Fountain of Youth. Since the party is desperate to go, Taylor examines Furby's body to retrieve his rope. To his surprise, however, he had not landed on top of the radio, which is still smashed. When they watch Furby's video again, they realize that he was just comatose following the fall and wasn't yet dead. When they phoned on the radio, it was he who replied. The damage to his neck affected the sound of his voice. Furby was killed by an unidentified figure who suddenly materialized off-camera. Kara tries to get out again. The group is now much more eager to get away. As the group waits, Veeves observes that the sky is changing color when she re-watches Furby's movie. Since they have been down here for years, it follows that each flicker is not a day but rather a season, and what Kara saw outside was a future Earth that had been destroyed. Suddenly, a futuristic ladder of some kind falls through the hole. Clara tries to climb it, but when she sees someone in armor descending, she is forced to descend. A caveman who created the sounds they had heard before assaults the victim before they had a chance to speak, killing Furby. A battle breaks out, but the futuristic gentleman turns toward the group as he removes the stairs and subdues the caveman with a unique collar. The group flees in terror and doesn't stop until they come upon some light. They discover two bodies on the ground, along with a few lighted torches. These are the parents of Hopper, who has spent decades below ground. To exacerbate the situation, a group of cavemen nearby are hearing the gang's arrival and are currently feasting on the deceased cowboy. In an attempt to buy the girls some time, Taylor instructs them to go while he battles the cavemen fairly. However, because there are too many of them, he is knocked down. After the cavemen pass by and the girls shelter behind a boulder, 
Kara creeps back and is shocked to see Taylor dead. That's when the futuristic guy shows up and starts playing around in the water pool in the cave's back. Upon receiving a positive test result, he pushes Kara away and drags Taylor into the sea, preventing her from retrieving her companion. At that point, a caveman appears, swiftly taking him out of the picture as Kara startlingly witnesses Taylor resurrect, proving that this is the enchanted fountain described in the tales. Before long, the other cavemen arrive as well, and by coordinated assault, they succeed in taking off his helmet, which restricts his airflow. After successfully attaching a second collar to one of the cavemen, Kara gives the man the tool he misplaced back to enable him to defeat the other caveman and win the battle. All those cavemen were put to sleep by such futuristic tools. Taylor offers to give him his helmet back so he can breathe later, but the man tells them he's running out of time. Veeves and Jackie arrive at that point, and as the futuristic person doesn't speak their language, he uses his computer glove to play recordings that explain what happened. After the gang vanished, their story made national headlines, and their relatives begged for assistance. After Earth became uninhabitable some millennia later, humanity departed on a massive spacecraft known as the Ark, which Kerr had already seen in the sky. The man passes away after the video ends. Taylor discovers Hopper's luggage in the cave while they are debating what to do. Taylor, who is determined to find him, instructs the girls to bring Furby's body over while he searches for their professor, making sure to bring the cowboy's revolver in case. Delving further into the cave, he discovers discovers Hopper's light trail, which he follows to some drawings on the wall that depict the cave's effects. Turning around, Taylor finds an entire prehistoric family, of which the child is the only one still living. He ignores them and continues searching until he eventually discovers Hopper lying on the ground hurt. The most startling thing of all is what lies in front of him, a sphere that combines multiple layers of time and traps individuals from all ages, including Hopper's sister, the Conquistadors, and cavemen. The purpose of the entire cave system, according to the professor, is to safeguard the fountain. Taylor tries to bring Hopper back with him as the ladies start calling for him, but Hopper fears he won't make it. He urges Taylor to go without him and keeps his revolver. When Taylor rejoins the group, she witnesses Jackie tending to her leg in the pool while the prehistoric child uses some water to heal his parents. As they wait after throwing Furby's body into the fountain, they hear a shot and realize it was Hopper, who missed with his one and last shot. Veeves lights a fire to halt the approaching prehistoric family as they pursue the group. When they return Turn to the room with the hole, they begin to climb out using the guy's futuristic ladder. When Kara ascends to the top first, she finds that water has filled the opening. She touches it, and something unseen snatches her up and drags her through the water. Taylor tries to save her, but just as she is about to be taken out of the cave and given a strange mask by eerie hands, a caveman presses the button on the ladder, making it disappear, and the group falls. The companions believe it is finished, but in a matter of seconds, odd cables emerge from the water and prevent the friends from falling. The gang is being pulled through the water by Kara, who appears entirely altered, just as the cavemen are trying to jump to capture them. More cables descend to explore the caverns after they have left. Furby wakes up a short while later and finds himself traveling through space inside the Ark Hopper soon appears with him, and when the group arrives to see how they're doing, they too are clothed in futuristic attire. Hopper's parents also appear on another pool, where they are greeted by his sister, who has recovered completely. It is now possible for all of humanity to journey to Mars and establish a new civilization in unison. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications, so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.